right, guys, welcome back to another Victoria Events with Caleb Shaw. It is Monday, May 9th, stack show as always. Let's just jump right into it because this man right here, he is the man. Let's just be honest. You know, if anybody's had some good steaks lately, some good ribeyes, some good boat. Boudin. Boudin. I'm, I'm eventually going to get it. Boudin. This is the man you probably got it from. If they don't know who you are, please introduce yourself and let them know who you're here with. I'm John Turner from the Chopping Block. Uh, New meat market in town at the corner of seventy or the corner of Navarro and the Loop, seventy ten North Navarro. Um, do a lot of fresh sausage, boudin, beef, pork chops, chicken. Well, we really we were really excited because a few weeks ago we filmed our episode of Meet Victoria out uh, out there, which is currently out. We will put the link for it in the comments. Um, we had a ton of fun, and you guys made it such a cool experience. I had never been into a butcher shop before, and so. I didn't I didn't really know what I was walking into. I knew it was gonna be cuts of meat, but how deep it went from there I didn't really know. And I had a ton of fun. Like we got in there, you walked me through the cuts, you you educated me on a bunch of stuff that I really just had no clue about. Um, and we had a ton of fun. And so I before we go any further, I just wanna say thanks for that. You know, I, I think it's a great episode. I hope you liked it. Um, but thank you for welcoming us in and letting us film that show up there. Oh. It was a good time. Thanks for having us, man. We had a blast filming it, cutting those tomahawks and making yeah, that boot in. It was good, and I didn't get tomahawk doing it. You know, I was I was nervous cutting one of those things, and if I screwed it up, you might just tomahawk me. But luckily, it worked out. Um, let's talk a little bit, though, about the chopping block. Man, what, what made you guys decide to open this thing and bring it to Victoria, and how's it gone so far? Um, so far, it's been phenomenal, better than we expected. We um, decided to open the meat market here just because there was a lack of one. Um, been coming down for about 15 years. My family has some property south of town and just got tired of going and buying your regular old steak every day at, you know, regular old grocery store or, you know. Well, one of the things I liked, and, and even though we were shooting an episode in there, is, is my anniversary was, was right then. and, and one you saved me so thank you for that we uh but what i liked is is you you had questions you know it wasn't just because i had questions so i was like hey you know here's what's going on and, and you you asked you know well what are you doing how are you cooking it how does she like you know all these different things and you kind of helped me piece together the perfect anniversary meal and it was good like my, my wife the whole time through that state just kept going on and on about how it was the best that she had had so i, I came out the hero because of you and but more importantly, what I wanted people to gather from that is you don't have to be like hesitant to walk into a meat market if you've never been to one before. They can walk in and you're more than willing to talk to them, to answer their questions, and to, to make them feel at peace and walk out of there with the, the perfect barbecue. 100%. Well, you can come in and we'll walk you through. What do you have? What are your options to cook? You got an oven, a cast iron, a smoker, a grill, a char. I mean, what, what do you have? And we can literally build your meal from there. That's outstanding, man. And so this Saturday coming up though, even this this is the official grand opening. Talk to me about a little bit what's going on Saturday and what you guys have planned. Oh, Saturday, uh, the 14th, 12 to five, we're gonna have samples, drinks. Um, some of our vendors will be out talking about their products, using them in samples, um, just having a good time, opening the doors to people who haven't been in yet. and. Um, just look forward to meeting some more people. You're going to have that trigger going with the, some of that? Say it again. I'm a boudin. Oh, there'll be boudin. We'll have some, I know, I think we're going to do some Wagyu fajitas, some of our different sausages, and I'm not quite sure what else the vendors are going to throw out there for us to prepare. Well, and I, I know, uh, you know, one of my buddies over there, uh, Joey Falco, he's, he's, he's always bragging about you, always talking about you, and, and, uh, um, I, I'm going to be snagging some of his brisket that he gets from you as well because he, he, he raves about it. And so um, anything that we need to know that we're missing that, that, you know, people need to know about the chopping block so they make sure they make it over there. It's, everything we do is fresh. It's not like the old way, you know, it's not like your old traditional way. Everything is made fresh every couple days. No binders, no preservatives, no fillers. All our meats raised humanely, no antibiotics, no hormones. So it's different than what we grew up with. You know, I like to know more what's in my meat, and so that's just me passing it along to other people. And it's not just meats in there. One, you guys have all different, I guess for lack of better, I don't know what the proper terminology is, but barbecue accessories in there mm -hmm. and different seasonings and flavors and, and all of that. But you also, in that first little rack thing there that you guys had, were all those different stuffed items. And, and tell me just very quickly a little bit about those, because that was one of the things I, I didn't even, I think you had a, what was it? A, 
You had a good one that, uh, stuffed with uh, uh, what's that uh, breakfast taco stuff that everybody gets? We've got know, we got cherry queso stuffed hatch peppers wrapped in bacon. There you go. That'll work too. That uh, it's not even the one I'm thinking. I'm thinking that dang breakfast taco that I just cannot. Chorizo. There you go. Yeah, yeah you came up with that chorizo one that, that I thought was pretty slick right there. And so, yeah, that was another thing that shot me is you guys had all those different wrapped items and stuffed items in there that you can, accessories to throw on the grill. So, brother, thank you. It's it's a ton of fun, man. You guys are awesome. You're delicious. And so I, I appreciate you. Anything I'm forgetting to let people know? Come see us. Come see them. Guys, Saturday, 14th of May, this Saturday, May sure, 12 to 5. 7010 North Navarro. Stop in there and see them if you haven't already. You will be glad you did, and so will your belly. We'll be right back with the next guest. Since 1932, Wallach and Volk has been closing mortgages and doing it the right way. And the reason why the Volks opened up a bank um, at the height of the Great Depression was because the bank needed to be opened at the height of the Great Depression. And it was good for the community at that time. A lot of the banks were going under. In order to keep that community sound and stable, it was something that they did. I think that that says something about who Wallach and Volk was 85 years ago. And the only way you get to continue to do it is if you consistently do it great. And we plan on doing this for another 85 years. Marketing today can be complex. Emails, customer relationship management, lead tracking, landing pages, and text messaging. But what if you could do it all with just one tool? And what if there was an agency behind the solution that could do it with you, or better yet, do it for you? Introducing Thrive Fuel 360, the new do it for you digital marketing solution. Drive leads, nurture prospects, automate follow up, connect with your audience, and book appointments all in one place. Thrive Fuel 360. We can't believe it. We're still overstocked on bedding, recliners, sofas, even sectionals. It's happening right now at Cayman Furniture. Buy it today and have it delivered today. And you thought I was kidding. Buy it today and we'll have it in your home tonight. All right, guys, we are back with our next guest. Really extra cool guest today, so I'm, I'm really excited for this. If you all wouldn't mind, please introduce yourself, big man, and then we'll get to your mama here. Colin. Colin. And how old are you, Colin? Eight. Eight. Outstanding. Mama. And I'm Sherry Kickendall, his mom. Well, we appreciate you guys being here. Before we go any further, though, I heard you're pretty good at jokes. And so, if you wouldn't mind, I'd like to hear a good joke from you. How do you count cows? Oh, man. How do you count cows? I don't know. With a cow collider. <laughs> <laughs> well played, young man. You got that. That's a good one, Diana. You, you do tell good jokes. Well done. We are here because you have something coming up that we want to make sure we get out and support. It's Lemonade for Cancer, and we're really excited to support you on this. Um, it's going to be Saturday, May 14th, but before we loop around and talk about that, Mama, I'd like to talk to you a little bit about what brings us to this event and, and what you guys are doing and, and why. And, sure. and um, see if we can get a little bit of support out there for you. Um, well, Cullen was actually diagnosed with leukemia um, on May 11, 2018. So. Um, we're going on four years. Um, he's been out of treatment for about a year and a half, so, and he's doing absolutely wonderful. We actually take no medicine, That's and we, at this point, we haven't had really too many, t any type of, you know, side effects that have, you know, extended past that, so uh, we're very happy about that, and um, he doesn't have to go back to the doctor very often anymore, about three to four months, so um, we are very excited about that, and we are kind of back to our new new normal, if you want to call it that, so. That's, that's outstanding, and, and for people that may be ignorant of leukemia and stuff like that, is it something you battle for life? Is it something that you can beat in the short term, or is it something you just kind of tr hope to manage your entire sure. life? So there's different classes of leukemia, or there's different types of leukemia, and then there's also different, um, I guess you would call them classifications of like the severity or the um, the risk, you, I guess you would say. He was actually um, diagnosed with um, ALL, um, or pre-B cell ALL is his actual type, because there's different uh, cell types. Um, and his was actually low risk. So we had a very great scenario going in. Um, when the doctor told me that night that he was diagnosed, that he was going to be fine, I believed him. And we moved forward, did what we had to do, and here we are. Well, so. that's great to hear. And, you know, I'm I'm a new age parent. I've got a, a two-year-old. And so 
I, I can imagine the emotional roller coaster from your perspective as yeah, well. Yes, and going back to the, what you asked me, I'm sorry, is that um, actually um, when you start treatment um, after 30 days, you go through a rigorous um, schedule of medications and um, chemo and different things. And within that 30 days, or actually I think it's 31, you should be cured. Wow. Or I guess you're not cured, but you should be in remission is Wonderful. what they call it. So after you get to that point, if you go back in for your scan and your bone marrow, uh, bone marrow biopsy. If everything is clear, you should be good. But with leukemia, leukemia is something that can come right back. So you have to remain in treatment for whatever the doctor decides is the right treatment plan for your risk group and for whatever type of leukemia that you have. So for us, we had a two and a half year um, treatment plan. So um, and we is that triggered? And I'm completely ignorant to this. Is it is it triggered by anything? You know, is it like Paul? I, I don't know. I, that was ridiculous. I, uh, whatever. No, but I okay. just I don't know. Um, you no, know, is I, it humidity? I mean, any well, triggers? I mean, with all cancers, you know, they're 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 coming up with different answers to things like that. But I mean, there's different risk factors for different things. But in particular, leukemia, they really don't know what causes leukemia. Um, of course, at first, you know, you think you're going to be the Google parent, but I didn't. And they told us not to. Don't Google it. Don't it's go not something. Road. Don't yeah. go down that road. You know, there there is really no answer. You're not going to find the right answer, and it's not your fault. So, um, anyway, so. Um, no, I think that's, are they, everything the same as far as in, in the two years of treatment, you know, as you move forward, sports, all that, able to do everything normal, or do you have um, to kind of bob and weave through things a little bit yeah definitely um really hard first year um you know uh, his counts drop he's in bed most of the day we traveled back and forth to houston pretty much every day um for that first year uh we decided to uh stay here and live here not move there like some people do because we have three other kids and at the time i had a six month old as well i have four boys and i had a six month old so uh we four just, boys mm -hmm. god bless you my mom had <laughs> six of us total but the first go around it was three boys and her hands were full all yes, the time, and you yes. had four, so God bless you. That's, so, uh, yep. One of the things I would try to do is keep as much normalcy for especially the rest of them, and um, we got a lot of help from our parents, so um, that was good to be able to keep them in school. Um, Cullen was four and a half when he was diagnosed, so fortunately he wasn't in school yet. Um, he was able to start kindergarten, though, um, once he turned. He was already almost, like he was five and a half. Right. So after that first year, things got a little easier, I guess you would say, and we, we go to Arlie Day victory and they were very easy to work with in terms of us having to leave all the time and uh, we worked with his teachers and now we're in second grade so we're doing Just really rock great. and rolling yeah. huh buddy that's awesome oh i have one more thing Talk to i don't me. mean Tell to me. interrupt you but no, i did want to say you had asked about leukemia and, and and where it comes from and how you get it but i did just did want to say is that you know he was a very healthy child mm -hmm. Nothing wrong with him. Um, it was May 11th. We were actually at his last t-ball game. Um, he uh, was playing catcher, and he was complaining about being really hot. And I thought, well, it's like 100 degrees out here. Um, and then we got our trophy, got in the car, and he just said, I really don't feel good. I thought he was going to throw up, which he did. I thought he was overheated. We went home. Um, he still just wasn't feeling very good. He wasn't throwing up anymore, but he just was laying around, had a little fever. That was a Wednesday. Friday night, we were already in Houston. Godly. It goes yeah. quick, doesn't it? Very and quick. I bet that was just, I can only imagine, you know, yes. I, I, when my son got his first round of shots, you know, it was, uh, oh. So I, I, as a parent, as a newer parent, you know, I, I can imagine what you all went through and, and you know, and I'm sorry for that. And, mm -hmm. and but I, I think it's neat that, that you guys are, are looping back around and you've had some good success and you've got this lemonade for cancer coming up that we're gonna try to raise some, some funds up. Let's talk about this a little bit on, on Saturday. One, I really like lemonade. So you picked a good one there. I'm excited for that. It's gonna be <laughs> really hot. So some, some nice cold lemonade will be good. But what are we trying to do here on, on with the lemonade for cancer? We trying to raise a little bit of money Mm -hmm. Good deal. Do you, you want to talk about for what? To, to help out to beat cancer? Um, we're we're going to give it to other people that have cancer. In Victoria. Other in kids. Victoria. Other Wonderful. Kids so you're, that's what I'm talking about. So you're going to help other people beat it also and find success also? Mm -hmm. That's what I'm talking about. Good job, buddy. Well, this is, uh, I'm sorry. Oh, that's right. okay. I was just going to say we, we've tried to, um, you know, this is his, May 11th is his is his diagnosis anniversary is what they call it and we try to take we're trying to take a negative and turn it into a positive so we've done a few Absolutely. things over the years to last year he had a bike a he raised over five thousand dollars for st jude so this year he decided to do a lemonade stand so. way to go dude yeah. that's awesome and i saw that miss dry um 
with Card My Yard Victoria that she had a, had a cool little thing coming and, and is going to help you guys out on something. If you yeah, want. she's going to put a, a sign up that's going to say Lemonade for Cancer in front of Tropical Smoothie, so you should be able to see it bright and clear uh, where we're at. So you want to tell them what time and where we're going to be? Yeah, tell me. 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock. And it's going to be on this Saturday. Yep, this Saturday. That is right. Do you happen to know where it's at? In front of Tropical Smoothie, I heard. Mm -hmm. Is that right? In front of Tropical Smoothie on Navarro? Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty excited for that. And Miss Dry, too, you ought to talk to her because she, she does dry water adventures and she does swimming lessons. And my son's going to go take those swimming lessons. May teach her how to swim. But, He's uh, going to do sink or swim this weekend. Are you? Yeah. Hey, that's <laughs> awesome. Do it. Like, learning to swim is a really cool thing. And, and, and then we'll, uh, you can go from there, and we'll sweep them over to uh, in front of Tropical Smoothie on Navarro from 10 a.m. until whenever we run out of the lemonade, yep. maybe about 1. Uh, but that again, that is lemonade for cancer, and you guys are going to take those funds that you raise and donate them to other cancer uh, patients here in Victoria. We've got about four, at least, that we know of that we're going to donate. We're going to try to do gas cards. We thought that might be a good idea with the price of gas and to actually be able to give them something to use it for and not have to worry about that those trips to Corpus and Houston that they do. So. I think that's spectacular because we had to uh, we had to do in vitro, my wife and I, and so it was the same thing. Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, we had to be there at 7.30 in the morning, so we'd roll out about 4.30 in the morning, get there and be home by you know 10.30 in the morning and start our day. And, and so that was a lot, and, and, it, and it takes a toll, but it can also unite you as a family and bring you together. And so I'm glad to see the positive attitude that you guys have embraced everything with. I hope your lemonade for cancer on Saturday is awesome. I will try to get by there if I can, but you're gonna have to come by here and tell me some more jokes, more. I mean, I had fun today. Do you have fun today? Good. Well, <laughs> I appreciate all you're doing. Thanks for being so strong. Thanks for being so brave. You 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 just did awesome. One more time, guys. Get out, support, buy some lemonade. This is Lemonade for Cancer. Saturday, this Saturday, May 14th, in front of Tropical Smoothie on Navarro, 10 a.m. to around one-ish. Um, Facebook, uh, Colin Kicks Cancer to learn about it, Colin's journey. Mama, anything I'm forgetting? I think you got it. Thank you so much for coming on, buddy. That was fun. <laughs> you man. Uh, guys, we'll be right back with our final guest. Hey, I'm Cindy Staley, and today we're doing something really fun. We've got studs that our community has purchased and sponsored, and they've written their names on them. This is something that we want you to participate in with us. Our studs cost us $8 a piece now, but you can be a sponsor for just $100 a stud. It's really a way for you to partner with our families. But when they walk in and they know that the community has partnered with them, it makes all the difference in the world. Please join us, won't you? It has been a good show. I've had a ton of fun. Got my friend on here. You've seen her before, but not in this capacity. So first we want to congratulate her on different things and adventures and, and well earned. And so congratulations on things. Thanks. Very happy for you. But in case somebody doesn't know who you are, or what I'm talking about, if you would, please introduce yourself and let them know who you're with here today. I am Sarah. I'm sorry, and I'm also losing my voice. That's all right. I, um, you know, it it happens out here. It sounds, it's all this pollen and stuff. Don't even yeah. worry about it. Sarah Bird uh, and I uh, was with Parks and Rec not too long ago. Really great position. Really great people. Um, this position opened up, and I could not pass it up. I was praying about it, thinking about it, and I went ahead and applied, interviewed, and got the job over at Children's Discovery Museum of the Golden Crescent. And um, really excited. I oversee education and programming, and I work. Uh, you know, just so excitedly, I'm, I love this position and um, I couldn't, so far I've been working in about a month, a little over a month maybe, I don't know, it's, it feels like we've done it's a lot so far. because you're happy. Yes, and so really lost track of time, but I've been there, yeah, a little over a month now, I believe. Good deal. Well, we, we are big fans of the Children's Discovery Museum. Yes. You know, we've, we've done an episode of Meet Victoria on there and then we've had them on the show lots yes. of times and, and we'll continue to do so because you guys are doing so much in the community and, and we're we're just we're pumped about it and we wanna 
we want to put a microphone on some of these things and yes. see if we can't get them out there a little bit. For and so, sure. thank you. Uh, you're most welcome, and, and thank you guys for doing this because uh, you know. Everybody always says, there's nothing to do in Victoria, but uh, I got a whole list here that says otherwise. And yes. so I'm excited about this. Let's talk about summer camp and some of the things you guys have coming up on the on the calendar here. Yes. Well, you know, I mean, just to, just to give a little shout out, I mean, people who don't know about the Children's Discovery Museum, we've been open since 2002. We started on Main Street, and um, I believe it was in 2014. Um, they bought the, or they they started working on the uh, Playhouse, which I used I to go there. I was a projectionist at Playhouse. I heard Liz told me yep, whenever y'all did I, I the used to start movies up there. Uh -huh. So I used to, I, I watched the, twi I watched Twister there. That's one movie I always remember uh, seeing there with my parents. And then, um, you know, we, we go there. We actually lived down the road from there, and so my mom would send me there for popcorn because the popcorn was so good. <laughs> so we would just That's go funny. pick up popcorn there and go watch movies at our house. But anyways, so yeah, uh, they opened up, I believe it was 2016, um, opened the doors. We used to go there with our kids when they were really little. And um, we've been, you know, our kids are staggered. So we've always just kind of gone there. And now my seven-year-old thinks that I am the coolest oh, person on man. the planet because I, I have this job here at this amazing place. And so it's so much fun to go there. But yes, we have some summer camps coming up and um, I am really excited. So this was the first biggest priority whenever I got this position. They're like, we got to get summer camps rock and roll and we usually already have the themes and the ideas for it. And so I was like, done. I'm going to get on this. Well, I, I'm going to over talk <clears throat> for two seconds because the very first one, yes. whoever did this, it's it's like they they know me and well, they're after my, my own heart here because well, yes. um, I did it. This, and this I'm, belt that's I'm screaming for that. comfort, like screaming for <laughs> relief, is because of this very thing right here. Yes. But I feel like we just became best friends over yeah. this. So <laughs> let's talk about this first one, June 6th through the 10th. Yes. I haven't even read the rest, ice but this cream, might be scream. my favorite. Ice cream, you scream. Tell me about June 6th through the 10th, ice cream, you scream. Ice cream, you scream. It's going to be a lot of ice cream, obviously, <laughs> but we're not just going to be eating ice cream every day. And of course, I want to make sure that everyone knows we will be accommodating dietary restrictions. Of course, 100%. We will be very careful with that. And there's so many versions of ice creams, gelato and sherbet, and, and I'm making you up. Yep, uh, uh, you just keep going. You Blue just keep Bell, going. I'm Baskin listening. Robbins. And, you know, there's just so many toppings mm, and there's so many mm, ways to eat it, mm. the cones and just, however, there's also things to think about for kids to, you know, project, I'm using a lot of project-based learning. They're going to learn what it's like to own an ice cream truck. They're going to, you know, the items that you have to purchase, what, what it takes to make ice cream. You know, there's going to be a lot of math involved. And if you sell the ice cream for this much, how much profit will you make? So how much should you, you know, there's going to cool. be a lot of neat ways to think about ice cream. And I'm pretty sure we're going to be making a car out of a popsicle stick with the battery. So yeah, I have a lot of people working on stuff, really excited. So I, I, I did just notice, and this may knock me out, but I, I'm gonna fight for my spot, but okay. it's ages three through eight yes. and ages nine through 13. I, I yes. did not see 43 year old Caleb on here. You're anywhere. more than welcome to come and volunteer. Okay, okay. I mean, I, y'all need an ice cream taster to <laughs> make sure it's all safe and everything for Absolutely. everybody. So <laughs> I got you there, but but no, I'll, I'll joke it aside these things and we'll get to the rest of them, but it's for, uh, I'm guessing two separate yes, camps? Yes, we have two, one in the morning, one in the afternoon. Perfect. Three to eight in the morning from nine to noon. And then in the afternoon we have uh, nine to 13 for two to four. Gotcha. So. And so some of these other ones, because it's, I mean, it's what, six weeks of uh, yes. summer camps here. So the first three weeks in June, and then we take a two week break, and then the last three weeks in July. Nice. And so, yeah, I mean, we're, we we don't want to, we want to give people a break, and also we need a break as well <laughs> to kind of reboot yeah, and kickstart and stuff. So, well, yeah. Well, some of these glancing through here, you've got art and everything. Yes. Camp Cast Away, mm -hmm. uh, CDM Society of Young Historians. Yes, and we're partnering with your good friend and my good friend, Greg Garrett, yes. over at the Museum of the Coastal Bend. Yeah, and that's such a cool, you know, I, I'm glad plug, you all are doing you're that. You're welcome. Yeah, <laughs> hey, hey, he's a man. I like that guy, you know. And, Love and, him. But it, it's, that's also such a cool museum that we have right there that I would argue so many people don't even know is they right there. They don't, and because, they need to go. You need to go today. Yeah, I live a, a block away from that thing and had no idea until we filmed Greg over And Greg and the team there, Sue, do a wonderful job of just maintain, not just maintaining it, but getting people there. They have a wonderful camp going on, too. Check that out as well. Yeah, and, it, and it's, again, it's just a cool place. It like, is a really cool It's not cool, one of these really where we're selling artifacts. them on something like lame. It, it's... I walked in there, I was like, holy crap, no, this is cool. You right walk in, our in backyard. boom, I mean, like right in front yeah, of you. It's the coolest. Right, yes. right there looking at it. Like, you know, it's sweet. And so I, I agree with you. Um, 
we have, let's see, the universe and beyond. And oh, then, which we actually have someone who works with NASA working at that camp. <laughs> so, Mr. Again, John Riley. You know, I, I'm yeah. going to be the old kid in camp. You know, I'm, I'm young at heart, so I, I kind of no. feel like I, I need to be there to some of these things. Absolutely. And then you got engineer camp. Yeah, to, everybody to still, everybody always loves the Lego robotics. And every every year they always ask, are y'all doing the Legos? Y'all doing the robotics? Absolutely 100% because we know that people love that it. the battle robotics? Yeah, we're doing um, ah, battle yes. bots. We're doing battle bots. We have our um, arena that we're going to be bringing out. They're going to do battle bots. Um, and then, of course, we have the Lego, probably doing Lego Wars or, you know, just we have these really great uh, coding systems and the kids get to learn about it. It's, it's wonderful. So. Well, I, I competed in that battle bots on our episode of Meet Victoria really? when, when we did that. And it was funny because the kids, they had these, you know, like, Destroyer from above, and they had all oh, these yeah. like names for. I mean, they, and some of them were around. really good. And we were going through, and one of them that looked really gnarly. I was like, "What's his name?" And the kid looks at me, and he goes, "Larry." And it just threw me so off. Like I, of all the names, like I mean, mm -hmm. it was like thunder from above. All these crazy yeah, names, and then for, Larry. Yes. I laughed so hard, and but Larry whooped Very my rear. End. Yeah, Larry whooped my rear end though, and, and uh, <laughs> but it was a good time, and and the kids were having a ton of fun through learning and and hands on, and and it was. I had a good time. Yes, you know? well, and that's what we try to focus on. I mean, we want to be an interactive community for our community. We want to uh, promote learning in many different ways. And that was one of the things that I said even in my interview, you know, uh, we want to include all different types of learning because kids learn all different types of ways. And so this is a way for them to come and play and learn. You know, I mean, it's, it's everything there is educational, you know, and I, I'm going to, I'm gonna say one thing, like even my husband was like, you know, you should give me ideas, you know, like put this big old playscape over here and they're great ideas. But one, first and foremost, we're an educational museum. We're a children's discovery museum. And we're, we're first and foremost, it's not just about play. Mm -hmm. It's about how we play and, um, and how we learn through mm -hmm. that play. And so every everything there focuses on education first and foremost, and so. I'm a fan of your husband too. You know, he's, he, I don't he's know anybody that supports. He's got great ideas, honey, he's got great ideas. <laughs> I don't know anybody that supports the Air Force more than that guy. I mean, oh, he is perhaps wow. the biggest Air Force fan I know, but you know, it, cool dude. I'm all, all over here clinching like, like I can't fight You know fight how much he loves the Air Force. I mean, I can't it's fight just, on Air it's Force. Out there. That's why they don't make Navy Go jokes. Navy. That's why they don't make Navy jokes with Go the guy Navy. that has cameras on him because Air Force will come back and win. But now, uh, all joking aside, I, I'm big fans of your you're family see and a, all you You're going to see a Go Navy. Just for that, you're going to see a Go Navy it's, sticker on your truck. It's coming. Dang it. You know, so. He walks now, around with those stickers. <laughs> I, I set myself up. You did. Uh, but now, I'll, I'll joke it aside. Thank you for what you guys do. We're, yes. we're, we're big fans of, of Children's Discovery Museum. Um, we're always here for you in the future. Make sure you keep us updated. Uh, guys, Ice Cream, You Scream, all the way down to Engineer Camp. Six great weeks of these. Uh, you can go to the CDM Golden Crescent.org, their website, or Facebook. You can check them out on there. Send them a message. They're happy to talk to you. Anything I'm forgetting? Uh, camps are $150 per camp. Um, if you are a member, there I believe they're 135. Go to the website, go check it out, go sign up your kid. We want you there. Outstanding. Thank you so much. Guys, appreciate you tuning in. It's been a great show. Thank you to our sponsors and for all they do. Make sure you get out and you support all of these great guests, and we will see you at the next one. Thanks so much for tuning in to Victoria Events with Caleb Shaw. Make sure you comment down below, like the post, share the post. It really helps the algorithm. If you haven't done so already, make sure you follow our page. If you're watching on YouTube, subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any episodes. And if you have an event coming on you want featured on Victoria Events, shoot us a message. We'd love to help you get the word out there. Lastly, make sure you support our sponsors. We could not do this show without them, so we're very grateful. Thanks so much, Victoria, and we'll see you at the next one.